do you get frustrated when you watch people manipulate others with their words? When you know that they are lying, when you know that they are saying what the people want to hear, when they're tickling their ears, and you know that they cannot deliver. Or you know that when the time comes, when the politician gets into office or whatever, he's not going to deliver. He's simply using deceptive words. And it's like the people follow him. What are we going to do? We'll talk about it today. do not know about you, but I hate being deceived. I, I want to know truth. I want to do truth. I want to live truth. I don't always do it, but it is the driving desire of my life to hold to the integrity of the word of God and to walk truthfully before others. And I want you to know that there is that tendency inside. And I battle it and you battle it. You want to save your skin. You want to not look bad. And so you don't always do the truth. You cover it up. We're talking about deception. All this week, we're going to look at what happens when people are deceived. When they think, hey, everything's all right because I've got the temple of the Lord. I'm a member of the church, you know. But you're not all right if you're not living like a member of the church ought to live. Let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 7. We're going back, and he is talking about these people trusting in deceptive words, saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. He says, listen, listen to me. Do you remember what I did at Shiloh? Do you remember the tent that was there? Do you remember how I brought that down too? Do you remember in 1 Samuel? Do you remember how there was sin in the camp? And because there was sin in the camp and the enemy was coming against you, that I let them take, I let the Philistines capture the Ark of the Covenant because you were trusting in the Ark of the Covenant and you thought that the Ark of the Covenant could cover your unrighteousness. You want to write these scriptures down and go look at them. Put them in the margin of your Bible if they're not there already. But in verse 12, he says, but now go to my place, which was in Shiloh, which was in Shiloh where I made my name dwell at the first and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people. Well, if you and I were to go to Shiloh, there's nothing there. There's just some rocks. That's all. That's all that is left in Shiloh because God judged. Listen to what he says. And now because you have done all these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you rising up early and speaking, but you did not hear. I called, but you did not answer. So look, go look at Shiloh. Now, these are the scriptures I want you to write down. I want you to write down Joshua 18.1 because that tells you that that's where the tent of meeting, the tabernacle, was uh, erected. Then in Judges 18.31, I want us to go there because what you find happening in Judges 18.31, you find them in uh, having a false god there. In Judges chapter 18, verse 31, the tribe of Dan, you know, has, has got a false god. And so in verse 31, it says, so they set up for themselves Micah's graven image, which he had made all the time that the house of God was at Shiloh. So instead of leaving Dan, which was up north, and going down to Shiloh to worship, they just turned to their false god. That upset God. 
all right? Then the next place that you see it is 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 3, where Elkanah is going with his wife Hannah, and Hannah's the one that gives birth to Samuel, going there to make the sacrifices at Shiloh. Then you look at 1 Samuel chapter 4, verses 3 to 4, and you see in 1 Samuel chapter 4, and let's go to that because I want you to see that. In chapter 4, verses 3 to 4, it says, When the people came into the camp, and this is because they have lost a battle. The Philistines are, are spread out against uh, the uh, Israelites in a battle, and they uh, Israel is defeated by the Philistines, by the enemy. And so when the people came into the camp, the elders of Israel said, why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Let us take to ourselves from Shiloh, from the tabernacle, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, that it may come along among us and deliver us from the power of our enemies. So the people went, sent to Shiloh, from there they carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts who sits above the cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Now, listen, these guys are scoundrels. These guys are, are, are grabbing the best of the meat and they're eating it and, and they're eating the fat and the fat belongs to the Lord when the people bring their sacrifices. These guys are sleeping with the women when they come to the house of worship. They're sleeping with them. I mean, you've heard about it. You've heard about pastors that have seduced and priests that have seduced and it's, it's made you mad. And, and you look at the wounds of the people afterwards. And so then it says, in the ark, as the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted, it's there. And they thought, the Philistines thought, oh, we're not going to make it now because the Ark of the Lord is there. What they didn't know was the Ark of the Lord might have been there, but these people were not worshiping God as they should have worshiped him. And so consequently, what you read in chapter 5 of 1 Samuel is, now the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod, and they put the ark of God in their temple, and their gods fall over. What's happening? They are trusting in deceptive words. They're, they're treating their, their religion, their worship as, as the sure guarantee that God's got to be with them and they're not living righteously. Oh, doesn't it make you want to examine your life? So watch what God says. He says in verse 15 of chapter 7, I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all your brothers, all the offspring of Ephraim. What is he saying? As I got rid of the northern kingdom, as I sent them into captivity under the Assyrians, is what he's referring to. He says, as for you, I will cast them out as I've cast out your brothers, all the offspring of Ephraim. As for you, don't pray for these people. He turns to Jeremiah and he says, Jeremiah, don't pray for these people. Don't cry for these people, Jeremiah. Why? Because God, as we saw in verse 24 of chapter 9, God is a God of loving kindness, yes, but he is a God of justice and he is a God of righteousness. And his justice demands that sin be punished. His righteousness requires his justice. And so he's saying, don't pray for these people. Don't lift up or cry or prayer for them and do not, do not intercede with me for I do not hear you. I'm not going to hear you. Don't pray for these people. And then he says, don't you see what they're doing? Look at them in the streets of Jerusalem. Look at what they're doing. He says, the women gather wood the fathers kindle the fire and the children, I, I mean, the children gather wood. The fathers kindle the fire and the women knead dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. And they pour out drink offerings to other gods in order to spite me. 
He says, look at what these people are doing. These are my people. And they're all gathering together and they're making bread cakes to the queen of heaven. Now, you know why I remember this verse so well? I remember it because a big time, a big time Christian communicator that has, I mean, that's all over Christian television. He was on and he was teaching one day, teaching. I put quotes around it. And he was teaching. I just heard him the other day. And it, once again, he was just teaching something that was heresy. It was not according to the word of God. It was a revelation that he had. And this man was teaching, if you want the anointing of God, then you've got to have a leader. Now, what does that imply? That implies that you're not a priest unto God, that, it, that the only way that you can get a blessing is to have a leader, and how about him? So he says, listen, let me show you this. So he runs some scriptures. One of the scriptures was this. The children gather the wood. The fathers kindle the fire. See? See? If you want a fire kindled, if you want the fire of God in your life, then it's the fathers that kindle it. The children can only gather the wood. The fathers have to kindle it. I just died. I thought, you have deceived these people. You have taken the precious word of God and you have distorted it in order to make your point. And your point is in order to get the people to follow you. It broke my heart. And he says, do they spite me, declares the Lord? Is it not themselves that they spite to their own shame? Now listen, listen to me very carefully. When you, when you are deceived and you follow deception, deception is going to result in shame. And this is what you see. And you're going to see the word again. You're going to see shame, shame, shame. You're going to see them in chapter 9 wailing because of their shame. Because deception leads to a lie and a lie leads to destruction and that leads to shame. And what you're going to see is, okay, this is shame because you were not ashamed of what you were doing. Precious one, precious one. When anybody gets on television and when they don't express and, and they have done what is wrong and they don't talk about how it wounds the heart of God, how it goes against the holiness of God and they don't name it as sin and, and, and that, then, then listen, you're listening to the wrong person. God is a holy God. We'll talk about it more in just a minute. We're talking about deception, and as you can tell, I am all fired up. Welcome back, beloved. I'm fired up because I want you to understand the, the, the end of deception. The end of deception is your shame. The end of deception is also the judgment of God. Because you see, lies have to be exposed. You cannot live a lie and not reap the consequences. Just remember that. You, listen to me carefully, be sure your sins will find you out. You cannot live a a lie and get away with it. It will be exposed. I mean, all you have to do is watch the news. All you have to do is see how God brings down one political figure after another or one, one athlete after another as all of a sudden their, their secret life is being exposed or all of a sudden these people that were heroes to others are now, you know, smoking marijuana or they're getting drunk or they're, uh, you know, picked up on drunk driving. It brings shame. Those people are deceived. They think that this is the way to live. 
God goes on to say, therefore, thus says the Lord, and I'm in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 20, says the Lord God, behold, my anger and my wrath will be poured out on this place. I'm going to pour out my anger. I'm going to pour out my wrath on this place, on Jerusalem, on the temple of the Lord. Do you know why? I'm going to pour it out on man and beast and trees of the field, on the fruit of the ground, and it will burn and it won't be quenched. It's like a, it, his wrath is like one of those fires that all of a sudden takes, takes course and, and just moves and devours acres and acres of, of, of wildlife and, and green and that. This is what God is saying. Why does God have to do this? Because God is righteous. Because God is uh, um, just. You say, but I thought he was love. Yes, he is. But he's never just love alone. And love desires your highest good. And if love desires your highest good, then, beloved, what you have to know and what you have to understand is that if love desires your highest good, he can't continue to let you walk in deception because deception leads to shame and shame and destruction. And so this is what he says. Listen to what he goes on to say. He said, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Add your burnt offerings to your sacrifices and eat flesh. He says, I did not speak to your fathers or command them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. When I got ready to deliver them out of the land of Egypt, I didn't say, okay, now I'm God and these are the sacrifices I want and these are the burnt offerings I want. No, God said, obey me. God said, obey me. And this is a key word. And I write, I, I, I circle obey with a blue, a, a fine point pen, and it's a, it's a blue circle. If it's did not obey, I put a slash through it. Now watch what he says. This is my commandment. This is what I commanded them saying, obey my voice and I will be your God and you will be my people. And you will walk in all the way that I have commanded you. He says, it will be well with you. He says, yet they did not obey. A blue circle with a slash. They did not obey. They did not incline their ear. They walked after their consuls. They weren't listening to God. They walked according to, because see, if you reject truth, you're going to believe something. Everybody has to believe something. So many times we set our own standards. You can find some mighty, mean, cruel people because they have a twisted thinking because of the mean and cruel things that were done to them. And so he goes on to say, he says, yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but they walked after their own counsels. In the stubbornness of their heart, they went backward. That's right. They went backward. When you start going backward instead of forward, what are you going to do? You're going to fall. You're going to fall. He says, since the day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt until this day, I have sent you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising early and sending them. I would get up early is what he's saying. Now, he never goes to sleep. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't sleep. But it's like, okay, I got to get the message up. Send him my prophet. Send him Hosea. Send him Nahum. Send him Micah. What does God require of you? But to do justice, to live righteously, etc. I sent my prophets. I would get up. I would send them early to you, early. A long time ago, I was sending you prophets telling you what's about to come on you. It's so bad that I'm telling Jeremiah he can't pray for you because it's so bad, because you've just, you've crossed the line. And then he says, yet, he says, they did not listen to me or incline their ear, but they stiffened their neck. And they did more evil 
than their fathers. In other words, the sin just got worse and worse. And if you study the history of the United States of America, that's exactly what you see. I cannot believe, I can, I can absolutely cannot believe what has happened in our country. I cannot believe even the things that were submitted to, to the Super Bowl in 2009 to be on the Super Bowl, and they were absolute pornography, absolute pornography. He says, you shall speak all these words to them, and he's talking to Jeremiah, but they will not listen to you. Now, remember, we're marking listen with a green ear, and if it's not listen, we're putting a slash there. You shall call to them, but they will not answer you. Speaking of calling, if you haven't gotten our free download study guide, if you have not contacted us, we want you to call. Go to preceptsforlife.com, preceptsforlife.com, and communicate with us. And if you can't, if you don't have a computer, if you're like this Jewish woman that was sitting in Bible study today, just drinking up this teaching of Jeremiah, then pick up the phone, 1-800-763-1990. 1-800-763-1990. So he says, you should call them, but they will not answer you. And he's talking to Jeremiah. It says, you shall say to them, this is the nation that did not obey the voice of the Lord their God or accept correction. Truth has perished and has been cut off from their mouth. Now I told you in our last week's lesson that that truth is faithfulness. There's no faithfulness. He says, cut off your hair and cast it away. Take up a lamentation on the bare heights for the Lord has rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. In other words, you are a people that are going to experience my wrath. I've been speaking to your fathers. I've been speaking and speaking and speaking. And now it's over. It's over. You're going to experience my wrath because you've gotten nothing but worse and worse and worse. For the sons of Judah have done what is evil in my sight, declares the Lord. They have set up their detestable things in the house, which is called by my name. They have put the statues to the sun gods. They have put the Asherah pole in there. He says to defile it. They have built high places to tope it which is in the valley of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I did not command, and it did not come into my mind. They're offering their children to false gods. We'll talk about it in our next program. beloved, as I teach you these things, as you see my fire, as you hear my passion, how do you feel? Do you feel the same way? Do you get very, very upset? Upset because, because they're not getting it, because people are being deceived, because they're being led astray. Does it upset you? It upsets me. It grieves me. It grieves me because of all that is done in the name of Christianity is really not Christian. It is not Christ-like. I'm not saying everything's not Christ-like. I'm just saying that there is an element and it is not true. It is a lie. It is a deception. It is a distortion. And you think, I know. And it upsets me too, Kay. What am I going to do about it? Listen, what you're doing when you support this program, what you're doing when you support Precept Ministries International is you enable us to reach more and more people with verse-by-verse -verse teaching through the different books of the Bible.
You enable us to introduce them to a way that they can discover truth for themselves so that they have confidence in what they have studied in the Word of God. They know it's true because it's not hard to do. It just takes time. And then they are able to discern truth from a lie. They're able to see, as Second Peter says, those that distort the Word of God to their own destruction. And consequently, because they know truth, <clears throat> they're set free. They're set free from a lie. So I want to urge you, first of all, to pray for this ministry. And second, I want to urge you to become part of this ministry. I want to urge you to become a partner with us, to become a giver to this and, uh, and I assure you, it's not going to go for anything I own or anything I possess. I mean, my salary is, is low, comparatively low. And, and, and I, I mean, not low compared to others. I mean, comparatively low to salaries. We're about getting out the Word of God. We're all impassioned to do so. And I just ask you to pray about joining us the day of God's judgment is at hand. Thank you for watching today. All the programs you see on Precepts for Life are available on CD and DVD. To order your copy of today's program, log on to our website at preceptsforlife.com. To download your free copy of the study guide or to find out more about Precept Ministries International, click on our website or call us today at 1-800-763-1990. Join us for our next program as Kay shares more Precepts for Life.